seven of them were bought in the 1950s, but this is the first time that all nine of them have been on display together. And that's because they're incredibly popular watercolours, so they get to go on loans all over the world, so they can be out quite a lot. And this is the first time that all nine are back in Bedford, so we thought it was the perfect opportunity to be able to put them out to, to the people of Bedford to have a look at them. Somebody said to me once that there's, if you put Turner in the title of an exhibition, there's such a thing as the Turner effect, and that tons of people will come to the exhibition. And that's really been the case here. We've had a 50% increase in visitor figures and over 20,000 visitors have come since Turner opened. So it's just, it's just been amazing. Um, my name is Jasmine Phillips, I'm 22 and I'm studying fine art at Loughborough University and I'm about to graduate in June. And um, I've been volunteering here for about three weeks, just finishing my final week, um, just doing bits and bobs and I've been here to get a bit of work experience for when I graduate, to get a job. <laughs> I came a bit before Christmas because I thought it was just a bit of the Cecil Higgins museum side and I noticed they had the Turners so I came to look at those and became interested in about curating and how they put the shows together. So I got in contact with Rosie who kindly let me come and interfere with it. <laughs> so I've just been taking it down today which has been the best part really. <laughs> necessarily they know Turner he's a, a British icon I think um, and with the film that's come out with Mike Lee's Mr Turner um, and Sherlock Holmes showing the falls of the Reichenbach which we have in our collection so I think it's Constable that says that Turner paints with tinted steam and in these late Turners you really see this there's just this light um, and washes of colour um, and not much representation, just these beautiful, golden, um, glowing works that, that people like Mark Rothko and other artists, that, that's the term that people are looking at to get inspiration from. Um, we have the Loss of an East Indiaman and we have First Rate Taking in Stores and they're both painted in 1818. We think that they're painted probably like within the week. Um, but the First Rate Taking in Stores is an incredibly important work because we have document, documentary evidence of how it was produced. And Turner was incredibly private about his technique. Obviously, he's, he's a painter, but he's also a businessman. He doesn't want people to be copying how he's doing his work. So he does it privately. But this work, he's staying at his uh, favourite patron and his friend, Walter Fawkes' house. And Walter Fawkes says to him that he wants him to produce a picture of a first rate, so uh, the largest of the men of war ships. And he wants it to show uh, the scale of it. So Turner says to Walter Fawkes' son, come with me um, and we'll see what we can do for your father. So between morning and afternoon, the boy sits with him and watches Turner work. And it's it's told to, when he's older, it's told to his wife, and his wife writes down exactly how Turner produced this work. And there is no other painting that, that we have this kind of evidence of how, paint, how Turner painted. So Norham Castle on Tweed, which is painted in 1798, um, it's actually a second example. He painted an original one which shown, was shown at the Royal Academy, and someone at the Royal Academy really liked it and said, could you paint me one? But Norham is particularly important because he produces several pictures of Norham throughout his career. So the first one is in 1798, and then again in 1801 and 1831. And it's recorded that he was travelling past Norham Castle and he stopped and bowed his hat and said, and, and his companion said, well, what are you doing? And he said, I've... I painted Norham Castle in my youth, um, and ever since then, I've I've never wanted for work. So it's it's an important it's an important place for him. The Higgins collection is is mainly works on paper, um, and works on paper. 
they, we have to be very strict in how often they go out because every time they're on display they're being damaged by the light so they're being faded. So we have a policy of only showing our works one year in every four and for the three years that they're not out then they go away and they're kept in cylinder boxes in the dark so that no damage can happen to them. So the majority of the paintings have been out probably for that full amount now. Um, they've been in exhibition in America, um, in Salisbury and in London. Um, so the majority of them will be going away. And I think Norham Castle is going on, uh, on loan again, so that will be going out to another part of the country. But the rest will be put away for another three years. So I think there's also um, an element of, of pride that Bedford has these amazing works. And even if they hadn't come to the Higgins before, they hear the, the name Turner and they, they come in, which has been lovely because we've had lots of people that have never been here before and hopefully we'll, we'll come back again and see the rest of this amazing collection that we have. Um, the feedback wall is good. I, loved, I love it when we do a feedback wall. Every morning I go and see what's been written. Um, and you get really lovely ones like children saying, I, um, I love Turner, I want to be an artist when I grow up, that's really nice. Or, or just when they've, they've made some nice comments about the exhibition, that they've had a nice day with their family. Um, sometimes they'll even leave drawings for you, so that's, that's just lovely when they do that. The most important thing when, when putting up an exhibition is you've got to make sure that the work's the most important thing, that you're not being distracted by sort of lurid colours or something like that. So I went with a very um, toned down colour palette and I wanted it to have the sort of elegance and um, I suppose glamour that these works deserve. So I was quite deliberate in making sure that when you came in through the door that the falls of the right and back you were drawn to it so that you saw it like a jewel box that these were and are very precious pictures. Um, so the dark brown colours on the wall and then leading through to the darker green so that you saw that the two exhibitions were complementary but, but different from each other. So, um, so Rokeby from 1822 is a little bit different because it's commissioned to illustrate a volume of selected verses by Walter Scott, uh, Lord Byron and Thomas More. And this particular picture illustrates a poem of the same name by Scott from 1813 and you can see eight lines of the poems on the rocks but he's not done it particularly perfectly so it's, it's, it's not quite right. Um, he first visited Rokeby in 1797 and it's, and it's a place that the artists like Turner and Girton and Cotman went to because of its, its amazing beauty. So. Um, you have Greta Bridge, which it turns up in a lot of watercolours of this period. And even later, when artists uh, from the 20th century, like Eric Crevillius, returns back to these places to, and returns to Greta Bridge to, to follow in the footsteps of people like Gerton and Turner. Yeah.